Hello and welcome back to the ESL One Desk. I'm Alex Machine Richardson and I'm joined by a plethora of knowledge. I have, of course, Hiko, Cadian, at this time Anders and Apex. And that's because we have completely misplaced uh, nothing. We have no idea where Jordan has gone. <laughs> if you do see a lost Cloud9 player, do direct him towards the analyst desk because we would like to make sure he's safe and sound. Until then, though, we do have our desk and we've got to talk about the game in hand. NIP up against Envious. What a performance. And you can see the stats on your screen now. As you can see, just a strong performance all round from the NIP side. And it was cool that Apex, you said it straight off the bat. You said NIP are going to take this. Were you expecting the result, though? No, I didn't. But, you know, I, I knew that NIP had a really, good, a really strong T side. They showed this every long tournament. So that was normal for me that they were so impressive on this map. Eco. One thing I'd like to mention is actually Shox. He was the player of the day. He's been the player of the tournament for Envious. Um, I think his performance is worth mentioning. He played pretty subpar. He had a rough time getting going. Um, and I think we have to hope that he plays better on Dust2 if, if uh, Envious actually wants to win. Yeah, yeah and Kadian. The interesting message from NIP in this one was that as soon as uh, Envious went for the cash pick, NIP went for the terrorist side, and you have to say that it paid off massively. They they played excellent Counter Strike on that terrorist half, and like watching at the players who had the head to head like early in this tournament, talking a lot about Sist and his performance, and once again he played up to like extremely high standards. And honestly, I didn't expect NIP to play this well at this moment. I I saw a lot of mistakes during the TSM game, and I thought that Envious might be the bigger task for them, but they are playing well. I have to admit that. How about you, Anders? You think that the uh, the T pick was a strange one? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, cash CT side of map, uh, not not something you'd really expect. Uh, and cash actually a map that NIP have had a lot of really bad results on. But the whole uh, predicting NIP based on NIP before Alu obviously is not a very good strategy going forward because they have changed so much with Alu in, in the lineup. That's what we've learned this event. And I think that's actually a really interesting point to bring up. Same is true for Mirage, a map that NIP didn't really play much, didn't have much success on with Alu. Uh, as Natu was telling us um, earlier, he's, he's been doing a lot of the calling. He actually helps NIP out with saying, well, how, how would 3D Max do this? And it seems to work pretty well. Um, what was a little bit confusing was actually how Envy, uh, once they're playing on the terrorist side themselves, managed to have a some decent success in the middle, and then they seem to have to stop going there after a while, even though it kept working. And while that may seem initially confusing, I don't think that's a question of, um, of Happy just deciding, well, we've had enough success, we don't want any more of it. It's simply a question of trying to change your, your, your way of playing before NIP figure it out. And that, that way you can easily ma be made to look like you actually gave up on something that was working, where in fact you were, you were trying to change it before it stopped working. Uh, but it did, make, it did make Envy look a little bit confused uh, at some point in that map. Uh, Apex, do you agree that Envy looked a bit confused? Maybe not the Envious that you know and, and you play against so regularly? Um, no, Envious uh, used to don't be so good as T on cash, recently at least. And um, I, oh, I see Nip, it's like uh, Nip two years ago, you know, mm. when they were so good, when they beat everyone. So I don't know, they look like this. They look so strong as T and really good as CT, so... I don't know what to, to, to say, they were Fighting so impressive. Fighting talk. Yeah. Fighting talk from Apex, saying they're as strong as they were when they had that win streak, that, that famous win streak that we know uh, NIP for. And now, Hiko, it's time to start moving on and talking about the next map. Dust2 will be our second map in this best of three. Of course, if NIP secure this one, they will be securing that place in the grand final. Talk to me a little bit about this pick and also how you see this one going down. This map to me seems probably the most even out of any map in the pool for both of these teams. Um, they both have a very similar style of play. Both have double op setups. Uh, both play very, very aggressive in middle. Um, so I'm going to be interested to see exactly how each team reacts to each other. Uh, I think it's going to come down to who, you know, who's hitting their shots, who is actually has more accuracy with the op. And I mean, you have happy and you have get right. So you're going to see lurking <laughs> on both sides of the teams. And I'm excited to see this one. And this. Uh, I'm really, really curious about how, I mean, obviously the double up setup is always talked about on Dust2. And particularly on Dust2, Envy have a huge source of strength in Smiths, who's actually already had a pretty insane tournament, uh, has been having some really, really good games already. Uh, even without orping, just generally Smiths has actually had a, a terrific performance most, uh, most of his games. Uh, so with him combined with Shox, and Shox has not a completely unique style, but he has a very aggressive style in the middle sometimes. So with just a little bit of confidence, with just a little bit of a good start for Envy, 
Uh, that can really throw an IP off. Not that they won't be expecting it. I think everybody knows it, but it's still hard to counter if you throw it in the right round. Uh, those are the two players I want to see a lot from on this map from Envy's side, because obviously they're the ones that need to win it, push it to that third map. Yeah, and of course, let's not forget, and we've seen Envious on this map before against Navi, and it was 16-14 in favor of Navi. So, I mean, maybe not the best result for them in the past, but this is a completely different playing field. We're in the semifinals, NIP against Envious, and it is prediction time, boys. Casper, I'm going to start with you. Where do you see this one going? I feel like NIP players are just on top right now, so I'm going to go with a, a tiny NIP win. What I want to say, though, is they're not going to get uh, that much room like they were given against uh, TSM. I know that uh, NVS is going to do the aggressive pushes into lower, lower upper tunnels and stuff, so you need to watch out for that if you're NIP gaming because it could go wrong. And Hike? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards NIP 16 to 9. Okay, so to clarify, the you two are writing Envious out in the semi finals. So, what about you guys? No, I believe in the French. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Envy taking it. Uh, I think it's going to be really close. 16-14 uh, victory for Envy, yeah. Okay, and Apex finally. I would say um, that AP needs to be better on this map if Envy wants to win. So I hope uh, for Envy and say 16-13 uh, uh, for Envy. All right, we're split on the desk. It's now time to join the casters, though, as we're about to go in with game number two. Are we going to see a third? We're about to find out. Let's see what Sean Gares and Lee D-Man Smith have to say about it. Thank you very much, guys. And well, Sean, what do we think about this one? We both managed to just catch a word with Freiburg a moment ago. They're pretty confident on those two. Yeah, they are. Uh, NIP is one of the strongest T-side does two teams in the world, alongside maybe Titan, and Envious, probably. Mm. Um, Navi also stands up there. And the reason being is these are the teams of the world that can actually do a default on Dust 2, similar to what we saw years and years and years ago in 1.6, where they just don't get picked. Um, Freiburg is almost a magician, the way he works around middle, using the mid-door smoke, flashing close cat, flashing over mid, making sure that an opera playing aggressive mid and an opera playing aggressive cat can't get that pick. Something that's interesting to note, though, is we played Envious... I believe twice or so on Dust2 throughout, throughout our boot camp. Um, Keo and Smith will push upper B multiple times the CT half if they play anything like they did versus us. And I think they will because Cash, they, they had that same mid strat. Um, I'm expecting to see a lot of upper B tunnels pushes. This half is heavily in the hands of Forrest, who's their upper B lurker. Um, sometimes he likes opping, but in order for him to op, their economy has to be set. This opening pistol round is really going to tell us a lot about how the first half is going to work, in my opinion. Of course, you can see Freiburg on your screen there, as I said. Very confident coming into this one. But as, the, as you just mentioned, and the desk mentioned, that this is really one of Envy's best choices. This is, this is one of their best maps that, actually, outside of cash, probably would have been their selection. So they've got to have been happy the way the veto went. Yeah, yeah. Envy is, is definitely probably a top two team in the world on Dust2. Um, maybe alongside NIP and TSM, who mm. NIP took out earlier this tournament. So it'll be interesting how this works out. All about that middle control. Let's see how it starts off right now. Well, of course, it was NIP's map choice, which meant it was Envy's side choice. They've, of course, gone with the CT side, which is why we're getting underway. Straight into the pistols. Let's see if they're trying to get fancy. At the moment, they've got four members. That were stacking yeah. and boosting up short, and, and this, this actually is, may work well. This is a throwback pistol right now for Envious. They've run this pistol actually at Dreamhack. Uh, they failed on it though, they failed on the boost. There may be a miscommunication right there from Envious. Well, Happy's gonna find himself in a little bit of trouble and will back away through that smoke. It's gonna be MBK picked off, right? But we'll get the plant down, but you can see Happy and Shocks. Shocks just get picked off. Happy tries to push on through the smoke, but this was a clean, clean push from NIP. And they were ready for that. Yeah, beyond clean. Um, again, NIP, they definitely did their research. Something that I can tell you a lot of from watching Envious play is they love playing cat on CT pistol. NIP, knowing that, basically knows mid is not up for grabs on pistol. It, there's too many people in cat, there's too many people in mid, it's too dangerous. We're going to take fast out long, we're going to overwhelm you with numbers, take the site quick. Great job, NIP, reading that round. Well, been lined up once again, and NAP are just piling through those doors already. MBK, this time, he's not going to go for the peak. He's going to come around, but oh, just the timing was quite off there. We'll get flashed out fully. Three members were there. Happy's trying to back away. He's got that Deagle, so he might try and get a couple of picks, but he's going to get drilled down by those AK-47s that NIP were already able to invest in. And now Shock's on his own on site. He's got support, but it's a long way away, and it is Smith's. Instead, he may well just... 
he even choose to keep a hold of his armor and CZ here. Going to try and get something as NIP back away, but that bomb plant will come in. And this is another solid start from NIP. Yeah, beyond, beyond solid again. Um, these second round, third round buys from MVS where they have CZs, where they have five sevens, where they have scouts, all that stuff. That's when they're at their most dangerous. NIP just had a flawless round on the second round. Not a single frag so far for Team Envious. NIP using long perfectly right now. So another great start, but now it is a full eco for Envy. They're not expecting too much from this one. And you can already see NP NIP building in confidence, just piling straight down that mid this time around. MBK is going to push. Get right's already got himself in short. This is going straight running across into the stack. goose. They're running into a stack, but it's a stack of pistols, and it may be enough to just gun them down. Get right. That Molly will catch one out. Shocks his tag low. Ooh. Almost managed to get one. Happy does get a single frag, but that is all. Smith will pop around the side. And another clean, clean round from NIP. They're really successfully getting on the site, and that was, I believe, the first frag of the game for Team Envy. Yeah, and another clean eco right there for NIP. They basically dropped four guys speedway instantly to get up Cat super fast. Let Envious basically know, hey, we're going to hit Cat fast. We may run out mid, but you can gamble stack A. We're going to Molotov the site. You're going to have to out-aim us at a distance, basically, with a USP. Envious couldn't do it, obviously. And NIP, good trades. Excellent job taking the A-bomb site. You can see that Keo got caught out. Tagged up through doors, I believe it was. It must have been the AWP of Alu. Yeah, I'll see in the AWP from Shocks this time around, but get right through the smoke. Manages to get MBK down. He's going to push around. He will catch a glimpse of Happy, but not before Happy does. And the reaction time is there, but Forrest knows he's there, but Happy gets himself a second. That is exactly what they needed. Long A secured, and now Shocks has his eyes on this short push that Alu is about to begin. Molly's going over to Goose. And platform that will buy them time. Shocks. Oh, he had to land that one. And now he's going to get flashed out, blind out. He's got the support of Happy, who's already got himself two in this. But it is going to be Exist that pushes through. Happy will go down. Alu comes around the side. Bomb plant going down. And it's a three on two retake for Envy. And it may well just work out for them. Smith gets Alu up close. Shocks will get himself another. And that will be a defuse this time around for Envy. And that double start, you got to look towards that happy, the double kill he got there, could have gone either way. Yeah, and what really made that round is basically Happy's presence around Long A with that smoke they throw. Basically, they throw it off the wall, and it lands in the same spot every time. It basically lands in a spot in the middle of Long A where he can lurk the right fringe, like kind of play a little bit aggressive and peek into the doors, or he can lurk the left fringe. And NIP knows that Happy likes doing this. Every team at the top loves, everyone, every team at the top knows Happy loves doing this. It's just he's so good at like knowing that you know and working <laughs> around that. Just countering it. Of course, MBK tried the same thing as well. Kia this time around gets himself successfully in the corner. Actually tries to make a bit of noise. Doesn't look he's going to stick the position. This may actually be a B play. We saw that four man stack at double doors right now. Smith's going to find himself a little busy, which is why he's going to go with that flash to try and slow things down. Freeberg will answer it with a grenade, which does land. Not do too much damage to Smith, and this is another position that Happy has been well known for playing, and he's just boosts himself on that box so many times watching demos, watching replays. Happy is in this position. Yeah, basically because he has the jump on a guy if he walks up mid. He's holding an off angle, so he has a really good angle on a guy walking up mid, and if they smoke, he's above the smoke. And he's basically one wing over it. The T's can't even see him. Great positional spot. And here's that upper B push I was talking about. Look Let's see that. if Force can stop it. It's Kiva that's actually going aggressive, and that gave all the information you need. Look at the damage. Forrest, just on 10 health, will back away. Happy went a little bit close, but that smoke on CT may well give a bit of nervous play for NV. They have rotated a little bit. You can see the stack from NIP is there. Shox is going to see it. Pulls the trigger, gets himself a double. And now, wow. with a double flash out, we'll pop around Goose. Alu will manage to respond with one of his own, but the damage may well have been done. Freiburg gets the head on towards MBK down long, and they have got the bomb in play. Alu's going to try and get the plant in, but he's in a three-on-one situation. They're already barreling down on his position. Keo's going to hop around the side. Alu's got two members coming from short, and that will be the defuse for Envy. A tricky round after considering it was a double up start. Yeah, and 
I really like how Envious used Smiths that round. So basically they sent him around mid early to look for a pick, which I was honestly nervous about, to be quite frank, because NIP does not let that position get picks against them. And you saw it right there. There's people hiding behind the Xbox. Mid's always smoked. They spam over the smoke. They nade over the smoke. That spot never gets picks against NIP. So I was a little bit nervous, but then they used him to push upper B after that smoke faded. Good stuff right there from Envious. Alu not winning the battle this time around. Smiths expecting that one lined up. And actually, that smoke working well in their favor. It's bought time for Happy to go forward. Smiths with the aggressive support. Exists, though. Was expecting it. The second you see that smoke down at the double doors, you've got to expect someone in lower tunnels. And NAP were very much prepared for it. Yeah, especially when you're playing against Happy. He loves sneaking in those B tunnels when Smiths playing aggressive around mid. Smiths calls that it's clear. Happy lurks his way in there. NIP knows that. Takes out Happy. Of course, that will give me information that Happy is no longer going to be around this mid position, which may give NIP the chance to try and push through themselves against Smith. Smith himself has rotated. You can see he's now with Keo. Here's that upper B push again. Oh, Forrest is burning. He's going to have to use his smoke to try and stop that one. They're going to realize, surely. Oh, that grenade's double grenade, I think it was, straight Forrest. onto Forrest. That's going to be enough to take him down. Smith though reacts, twins around. Will get himself one that's going to open up problems. Get right, tries to deal up himself. Gets Smith down, but MBK is there for revenge. And now it is all square, 3-3. Three, three. Beautiful stuff right there from Smith and Keo holding down B, pushing upper B. Forrest almost had him in like a checkmate situation where, hey, you know where I am, and but I'm just going to check it chill here behind the smoke and if you push I'm gonna use it as a one-way and you're, I'm gonna take you out they needed him out good stuff wow envious good job so, envy this time around starting to look a little bit more comfortable on the CT side not falling foul of NIP's charges and that's forced them to slow down their own position they're gonna go with another long a stack here they are only on the pistols, of course, but they have managed to open things up. Shocks gets taken down, but MBK is waiting in pit. He will get one, but they're going to rush around. Happy in support. Will get himself the second, but he gets dinked out. Oh, swings to the pistol. Smith comes in support. And well, a quick, quick round. It was a pistols, but the damage was pretty good. They managed to get two rifles out of the hands of Envy, but they've got enough to just rebuy. Yeah, they got two frags, but honestly, that looked really dangerous for Envious. Um... Good rotations from Happy coming in to save NBK right before he's about to die. NBK lived for just long enough. Where rotation was able to come in. Good stuff again from Envious. They're keeping their economy up. Only two deaths that round. This time around, they're not going to challenge across that mid. Alu with the AWP was lying in wait, but they've successfully got themselves on B. That smoke will have covered any information that NFP may well have had. But they've got themselves into pit this time around. Happy and NBK playing a little bit more defensively. Shocks, though, has the angle should anyone show themselves. Oh, that rotation may well just come at a crucial time because... Yet again, an upper B push. <laughs> this is going to come around. Happy doing the damage. Exists just on nine health. MBK, he's picked off a car. And then they have got themselves an open opportunity on the A site here. They know that Happy had dropped down. They're going to get him taken out. And this is, well, a very, very good round for... NIP so far. It is going to be Smith, the last man standing. He's going to try it and hang on in there. I don't think he's going to be able to escape this one. Alu tracks him. And that will be a round for a ninjas in pajamas on the board. 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I really like what NIP is doing when they, when they spawn with two long A spawns. Basically, what they've been doing is um, it's generally been forced, actually. He gets that long A spawn so he doesn't go upper B tunnels. He'll run out to the blue bin and basically have someone flash form, flash form. And since he has that top spawn, he's basically able to get to the blue bin because they're pre-smoking the corner. And he just has control of long A. MBK can't get pit, has to back off. And Envious loses control of the map. Well, Alu in position early on tunnels. And actually, it's Envy that are pushing it. Oh. Doesn't manage to land the frag. Gets caught out. Now he's mollied. He's burning. He's gonna, Smith is going to catch him out. And Alu, he tried the aggressive AWP, and it's just backfired on him. I can't tell if I'm watching my scrim demos against Envious right now. <laughs> this is the guy I clearly would have felt like. They push upper B every round. Well, it's... Maybe it works out. Maybe they've been watching them demos. Who knows? Exist though. He's about to push through mid doors straight into shocks. The second one comes through. It's Forrest. And well, we saw just the damage he can do in those doors early on in the day against TSM when that triple kill he managed to get in the exact same situation. Kayo will pop flash himself around. He's going to find an easy kill on Forrest there while he's blinded up. And now Happy's going to go aggressive, looking towards those lower tunnels. Just two members of NIP 
and they're already corralled into those tunnels and Envy know exactly where they are. Happy comes around, doesn't get the kill, but he got enough information to see them both there. Exactly, that information right there is huge. It allows NBK to basically control this side of the map, keep two on B. Not even a bad death right there by Happy. Expecting the boost, doesn't matter. It's not the reaction time. Get right, the last man with the AWP will get gunned down. They knew exactly where he was, and it was Smiths from lower tunnels in the end. And that is a round for Envy. It's hard to tell really how this game's going. Obviously, you know, looking at Dust2, because it's honestly, it really doesn't have a sided opinion anymore. It's really down to each team. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so for a long time, the meta on Dust2 was it was always T sided, and then some point about like a year and a half ago, it just became so heavily CT sided. I think about when these doors became almost unspammable, the, the map became heavily CT sided because the T's could basically not control middle at all. They get off. They can't spam close mid. It's starting to change. Happy's trying to change it for Envy at the moment. Gets himself a double and low. I'd make it a triple. Get right flashed out. This might be a 4K for him, but I don't think he's expecting Get Right to be there. And that Tech 9 pop out will stop that attack dead, but the damage is indeed done. Alu with the Tech 9, Get Right recovered an AK, but this is now a 4 on 2 situation against the double AWP setup from Envy. Smith's making sure he doesn't get pushed too close by Get Right, who tries to sneak his way through that smoke. Alu about to join him. Smith's just get tagged heavily, and Get Right takes him down. That's at the CT, but immediately they back away, but they are running headlong in into an MV defense. But MBK, unsure on the position of this one, has rotated the wrong direction. Shocks gonna get caught out, but get right, does get pinned down. A second for Shocks will be all it takes. And that is another round. Uh, a steady round for Envy there, after the damage really done by Happy in that yeah. lower tunnels. Strong positioning right there by Shox right there, knowing that late round, probably don't have a Molotov for the site. He would definitely have the jump on the first guy. Smart play, good stuff by Shox. But something to note there, Get Right lurking out mid with that smoke. That's something that all lurkers should really embrace in this game at this point. He smokes mid door and I can tell from experience, he just stares at his radar, basically, and watches the dot as it maneuvers around the door. And he's, like, outlining the door almost with his dot, and he's lurking the fringe. That's a great habit to be able to do if you can do it effectively and know the radius of the smoke. Kit Wright's almost... It's almost artistic the way he does it. Well, There's going to be a five-man pistol. That grenade not going to quite catch them where they'd like. Shocks. Though does have a Tech-9, so if he gets rushed down, has enough in his pocket. He is an expert with this rifle, but Exist does manage to gun him down. I call it a rifle. It pretty much is these days. Forrest will get himself happy. And now, as the bomb plant in, Kayoshima comes around the side. Should be able to clean them away. They're already covering around short. It is a two-on-one. Get right, doing what he can to delay this bomb defuse. But it is going to be Envy that will get it. No kit, actually. I was going to say, he's going to switch around. MBK has a kit. That will be 7-4 for Team Envy. Yeah, but a very costly round right there for them, especially considering NIP hardly invested any money at all. Just a couple pistols, very minimal nades. Still managed to get three kills and almost even win the round. So Envy starting to clock up a couple of rounds here. Starting to look a little bit more confident in their play. On the CT side, wasn't sure if they'd be a little bit shaken after that performance, but of course they are. Major winners! That's not how you'd like to start a round off there. Shox is also going to get peeked out. Get right, having a look. Not going to quite find him, though. And yeah, doing his infamous away. peek long, where he throws the flash off the door, bounces hard off, just straight peeks the corner against anything. Auber, Coulter. This is the versatility of these top teams. Happy just recovers that up and takes down the opposition number. Alu through those doors and immediately things are all level. Once again, Shocks. Oh, he's holding the angle and Get Right's going to walk straight into this one. Will he pounce across? That's the question. Nope. Takes his kneecap clean off. <laughs> Shocks is so strong positionally. What an angle to be holding. Just no one would clear an angle like that at top level. MBK flashed out here. Got to be careful. If Forrest would just catch a glimpse towards him, but he's got the support of Shocks. He will go down. Shocks has this short. Pass covered from range. We'll get flashed away from this one, but he knows there is a number of members of NIP down. Exists with the bomb plant. Shocks does have the support. It's a three on three. Here comes Happy. But he's in an awkward angle. He needs Keo. 
and shocks to really try and drive home this difference, but exist already with one. They see both members of Envy. This should be a clean defense, but shocks has been caught out. Forrest and Freiburg waiting on short. Gonna try and keep them away. He does go for one, but he's gonna get quickly talked out. Will not be able to go for the defuse. The timer is ticking. He's not gonna have time for this one. And Freiburg's job is done. It will be the fifth round on the board for NIP. Yeah, and I think, I, I want to say watching shocks that round op game helper, it looks like there might have been a miscommunication where probably the guy spawned said one quad, because it looks like he really thought one was behind that quad box. If, if, I felt like if, if he knew there wasn't a guy behind that quad box, he would have swung a little bit wider, because basically he opened himself up to getting flashed like he did, fell back, and they weren't in a very good retake situation. So I'm pretty confident he would have peaked. Alu really is winning out that battle. But he did get hit. Look at him, down to seven health. Just not quite enough. Tagging just a little bit of the terrain. Freiburg meeting some aggression of envy on the short there. There's a double stack as well, trying to peek out towards him. So he did a good job at not losing any life. Smith's going for that re-peek on Alu. Alu has it. Has his AWP trained on him. Smith is going to look. And Alu gets himself a second. This is working the way of NIP once again here. As Kiyoshima with that Deagle tries to go a little bit more aggressive, but it's just pistols left for Envy now. So you'd assume that NIP could close this one down. Get right, going, looking. It's happy that's just waiting for someone, hoping that they will make the mistake of walking and not looking the angle that he's facing. With that CZ. Bomb plant in, and it's just going to be a case of hunting them down. Happy's the only one with armor. Kiyo just holding on to that Deagle. Trying anything, really, from range. Yeah, and um, this is another clear example of how good NIP is at taking middle as T is on Dust2. I, almost any other any other team, Tier 1, Tier 2, has a lot of troubles actually not getting picked in middle. But NIP right there, they're just constantly facing offers in middle. They know like certain peaks and angles and timings, nades, spams through the smokes that really eliminate all of the angles. There's, there's almost no angles that they can get picked from throughout the entire sequence of when they're in middle. Freiburg exists from lower and even Alu from top mid. They do a great job maneuvering around, basically coordinating time peaks together. Good stuff. Smoke goes out, get right, pushes through, flashes. They're just going to run on in there. They're going to find MBK, but MBK will come out on top. Freiburg tries to peek around. He had already taken down MBK. He was expecting Happy maybe to be in there. Shox pushes through the smoke. Very aggressive onto Forrest there. Kia will actually come through lower tunnels. This is aggressive stuff from MBK. They get around the back side of NIP through mid. Smith, so on long A. He's going to get caught out. Kia trying to get the rotate, but Forrest is the, has the better of him. And just 11 health now. Happy. Through the smoke, flashes himself out there. It was a tough situation in a one-on-three that NIP come out on top on now. 7-7, seven, seven, last round of the half. And this is pretty much neck and neck throughout. Yeah, great stuff again by, by uh, NIP. They fast take long, knowing that NBK is going to be the solo guy that crosses the pit. And what you see from Get Right as the first guy at long is easy. He's running towards the long A smoke that they threw as T's. And basically, as the guy behind him runs out the door to clear the pit flat, he swings to the right. So basically, they're coordinating that peak to the guy running through the smoke as the CT, and the trade's always going to happen. Opens up the round for them. Great, great peaking again. Follow up and get the revenge every time. Yeah, it's yeah. working out very well for them. We are once again seeing anything forced out. Is that, a, is that a double or a triple stack? I didn't quite catch a glimpse of it just off to the left there. It's MBK bouncing around. He's on his own. Happy is stacked up. It's Keo that's the sandwich, it seems, just below. As they wait for Freeberg to try and push through those doors or maybe just get something on short there. He should be able to get a tag on him. Smith's smoked out. The rotation coming from Envy, but it is going to be just a pistol charge for them and get right with that AK. We'll do enough damage. Forrest gets himself one, and this is a fast push through. NIP will get themselves the bomb plant down. Shox gets one, tries to get a second. Alu actually has to switch across with pistol of his own here to keep him away. But this is going to be the round on the board for NIP, and that's a good, solid T side. 8 7 overall. Remember, this was their map choice, and they're going to be confident going into the CT side. Yep. And there's Freiburg showing why he is one of the best at dropping in that dark alley, taking control of the middle all by himself, using that mid smoke.
knowing that as he first jumps onto the Xbox, that NOA sack that you're referring to to the left side of the door, that can't see him. So he knows he's safe from that. For just that, that those couple pixels, he's safe from that, can peek cat, push that guy back, doesn't progress any further. Even though he sees that guy, he's aware that there could be that NOA stack on the other side of that smoke, backs off, goes back to along to his teammates. Freiburg doing something so little, doesn't even get a kill, probably won them the round. So far, a solid performance from NIP. 17 frags on the board from Get Right once again. We saw this previously against TSM, really charging captain in his team, honestly, throughout this one, which... Funnily enough, you know, the lurker position was uh, questioned, I think it was, on the desk uh, a couple of days ago, but really hasn't needed to do the lurking position. He's just straight out running at them on long eight. It's working well for him. Yeah, and I noticed that a lot from Christopher, is that he's really changed up his play style over the last several months. He's much more aggressive than he once was. He's going out looking for picks. He's entering bomb sites first. He's really being super aggressive, but then also he has that same style that he used to have where he'd go really slow and flank behind a team, get a double kill in the middle of a, of a hit on the other side of the map, and really put just decimate a team's morale. And from MV's position, you know, if their morale is perhaps decimated, I don't think it will be just yet, but what are they going to look towards in his T side? How do, they, how do they approach this one? Bearing in mind, they already won map down against Cash, and... If they don't have a good start on the T side, those rounds are going to start slipping away. The pressure is going to be start piling on them. Yeah, I put a lot of pressure, that, to be honest, uh, on Shocks and Happy this half. Happy's going to be doing the same thing Get Right kind of does at long, except he actually lurks even more aggressive than Get Right. Um, he'll, he'll frequently look for those picks at long in the smoke. He knows a lot of tricks with the smokes at long A. And if you miss your smoke at all, he'll use it to his benefit. So he's a big... Big factor in this half. Shox is very aggressive going up cat. If he feels you're playing long heavy or feels like you're in a 2 1 2 setup where you're ignoring cat, he'll run off and jump spawn all by himself. And he's, he really reminds me of Apex in that regard. They're great at reading the opponents when they go up cat. Now on to the pistol round. And of course, we talked about how important this one may well be. Forrest opens up his account on Shox, taking him down. And that may well be the key man for Envy already out of the picture. Kio will reply on Freiburg, tries to get Alu as well, tagged up in CT spawn quickly, backs away to the support of his team as they three-man stack it through. Alu's going to peek around this corner and find himself suddenly outnumbered as Exist holds angle. They have information from that window. Look at Get Right. We talked about the lurk, didn't we? He's got up behind them. And this is going to be a three-pronged attack as they make their move on towards them. NBK, though, will take down Forrest. That's not going to be on long. And this is going to open things up. It's Kiyoshima, very low here. Smith's getting tagged up. Alu has him pinned, but Smith will come out on top. Exist comes out of his window, pushes down from the B site, and takes control of that mid. It's just Exist left for them now. And that bomb plant will be going in over on the A site. Exist in a tricky situation here. He knows that Smith is just behind him, which is why he's keeping that hold of that angle, but he knows he's... The clock is ticking, 30 seconds on that bomb timing now as he makes his way through. MBK holds the short angle, everybody doing just what they need to, not peeking too much, just at the right time. When they get that double numbers advantage, they all come out at once and it will be Envy getting themselves the pistol round. Yeah, beautiful round right there from Envy. I can't emphasize how much um, rotational knowledge is necessary on Dust2 right there. And, and they're down four versus three. They died initially to a cat hit. So what do they know? They know long A is open. So instead of sending all three guys there, which is something that maybe like a, a lower tier, tier two team would do, they send NBK out long solo to basically gather information, kind of spot that guy top site. They know he's probably gonna be top site. Also control the spawn rotation. And I, my guess is those other two guys were gonna go up cat, but they encountered fights in middle. But basically, MBK knew that the guy A was kind of low, took him out, instantly pushed a cat because he knew that the rest of the guys were on the B side of the map. The rotational knowledge involved in that play alone is tremendous. That's years and years and years of playing this map. Freeberg has found himself the opener here. It was shocks. Uh, happy sorry, taking a look. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. The pixel was all he required. Oh my goodness. Gets himself a double. Can he make it a triple? No, not going to work out. Keo does manage to get him down, but he saw everything there. They know exactly where they are. And this is, well, a pistol round working so well in the favor just for the help of that man. And now Keo all on his own. 
And suddenly wondering, how has this turned around? We can talk about Tech Nines all we like, but when that man has a deagle in his hand, there is problems for Envy. Yeah, and that's one of the rare times you'll actually see Freiburg smile in a live match. You know he's feeling it. You know he's so happy about this. He's, he knows how important of a round that is. Watch for MVS to rebuy here, maybe. They're known for rebuying on this third round. It's almost like a rage buy. They do it to control their economy. They know they're going to have to double save. It's a smart move by them, and they have strats designed for these rounds. So be careful, NIP. Be careful. The Tech Nines are coming. There's only two of them. There is a lot of armor, though, on the side of Envy, but all the rifles, all of those AKs collected from NIP. Yeah, and NVS are going to be going up against their own guns. Bomb pass from MBK as they look to make their way through. Smith's in support. It is going to be a stack out. There goes the flash. Is it going to be enough? One man in pit. It's Freiburg. He didn't get caught out. He does get tagged heavily. Gets himself one, though. He's got the support. And look at that. The Freiburg and Alu show. Shows up in time, and that bomb plant is now loose <laughs> over on the pit. And well, Happy suddenly finds himself all in his own. CZ tries to make anything from this one, but he's in a four on one situation. There was a couple of people low, but it wasn't going to work out for them. And that was a really well worked long A defense. They read that one. It was. Yeah, Alu has eight frags so far, and Honestly, those eight frags are all so impactful. Those two frags saved them this round, ultimately dug them out of a hole. Freiburg instantly got dinked. That round really looked like it was going the wrong direction. Good stuff by Alu. Great rotation. If you have just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, well, this is the second semi final of the day. Fnatic already through after taking down the hometown favorites, Virtus Pro. 2-0 in what was honestly a very close matchup, a lot closer than a lot of people predicted, that's for sure. Alu, though, taken down, gunned down effectively by a P250 rush around short there. And this is a quick bomb plant from Envy, and then IP scrambling to react. Freiburg was caught off, smoked out himself on that long. Now the rest of the team will rotate. Double pistol from short will work out wonders actually Kayashima and shocks do manage to get down get right and forest exist trying to make his way through but freiburg already pinned off the pistols are working wonders here team envy they've got themselves a couple of kills one more to go exist hold steady i don't think he's going to turn this one around but he's got three can he make it four yes he can sadly no time but he gets himself the four can the exit but an ace in the end it was yeah. didn't even see the first one come through nip well, they lost the round, but my God, did he make it count? It was an excellent individual effort right there by Exist, but they just lost the Glock Eco right there, and you can't help but think, after such great early rounds right there, what happened right there? Where was the rotations? Where was the nade usage to slow down that rush? Um, NIP may be getting a little bit complacent. I, I'm sure they're going to wipe that off right now, come back strong. So 10-9 NIP, despite the fact they didn't get that defuse. He did force Envy to just about lose everything, despite the fact he was a pistol rush. A good eco from Envy. And that's something a lot of teams talked about in the run-up to this tournament. Facing those anti-ecos, working strategies to make sure you don't get caught out by them. But we still see it throughout this tournament. Yeah, and even, even Glocks like that, that was, that was incredible that Envious was able to win that round. You rarely see something like that happen on this map, Dust2. Um, it's, it's just such a far, far distance map to fight. Alu sees this one, shoulder peeking or not. Shocks will lose his arm. And down he goes. Three members of Envy left. The bomb is working its way through short right now. And it is going to be NBK that tries to create the distraction over on the B side and try and draw their attention. But instead, it's going to be a double team effort. The flash and catch out for Exist. Freeberg knows exactly where they are. All the information to NIP. It is just Kiyoshima, the last man standing, but he's in a one-on-four situation. Gets himself another. Make it a one-on-three situation. We've just seen Exist do it. Kiyoshima now turn something amazing around. Alu holding the angle. Doesn't matter. Forrest is already going to pick him up with a FAMAS. And now the rounds continue to go in NIP's favor. 11-9. Yeah, awesome. Awesome right there of that pop flash that happened in the B-bomb site. Um, Exist probably called for it. Maybe felt the felt NBK working up. His smoke probably just faded. Gave it about five seconds, which is about the time that that lurker would creep in if he knew the smoke was fading. Good stuff by an IP right there. 
Oh, it's a fast push this time around from Envy. They're going straight towards that B site. Flash out for Exist. They don't manage to follow it through. That smoke will slow them down. They were quick into the tunnel, but they choose to cautiously approach this one. The Double Tech Nines picked up a couple of P250s. It worked out well for them last time around. That flash will do wonders. Exist will get himself one, gets himself two. Spins around and happy. Not going to get the third, but all the damage may well have been already done. Forest will get picked off. That Tech Nine doing work. They're in a three on three, but get right on top of MBK's head. Happy gets himself another on the board. He's got himself a triple. Freeburg will creep up, gets a glimpse of one as he hops across the board. He is in a one on three situation. Is it going to be enough? Happy comes around the side. Freiburg closes it out. And it is now 12 9 to Ninjas in Pajamas. Just a couple of rounds away from the finals. Freiburg's coming up so huge right now in these rounds. Um, again, NIP found themselves in a really bad situation on an eco round. It's almost like these times that NVS has pistols, they're entering the bomb sites better than when they have guns. Exist did a great job, though, honestly. Uh, I thought they were going to shut down that rush the way Exist maneuvered around the plat box, basically uses, using his nades effectively. Um, Envious, really hard to bring down though, apparently, when they have these pistols. Well, good luck rushing Exist down through that B tunnels this time with that auto sniper now in his hands. Not going to get fooled a second time. Freeberg going fairly aggressive on those long A doors, but he's going to take a peek through and realize there is nobody there. That's going to give enough to give Forrest a little bit of a peek. That smoke and wall banging from Team Envy will give Forrest all the information he needs. He's going to just try and edge his way around, see if he can catch anyone. Looking on top of all the Xbox, he will be Keo. He will manage to get around there. Will get taken down. Freeberg with the auto sniper. Gets MBK down, who tried to sneak his way around the side. And now the four on four is on. Short push seemingly being considered here. There's three members stack around, but oh, if they go through these doors, this is going to be a double team effort. Oh, that's the bomb loose. He's come through the doors. That's exactly what they needed. Exist with that auto sniper. He's going to get picked off, but get right is still there, but now they're going to try and close the angles around in. The Happy comes around the backside, but Get Right was ready for it. Spins around, gets himself one. Not going to get the second. Shocks now in a one and two with Freiburg coming up through the mid. He see, already sees him, though. Shocks has collected the bomb. He's making the tracks. Is he going to be quick enough? You can see Allo already trying to speed rotate in this one. Realizes the situation, holds the angles. He knows that Shocks has got to pass on by. Will he land the shot? You bet your life he will. And now it's 13-9 for NIP. NIP, good rotations again. Great shot by Alu to end out that round. Uh, Envious did a really good job controlling mid, honestly. Forrest got double peaked perfectly. Guy, Shocks actually spammed close mid, and it was no mistake. He went all the way back to the end of Cat, came up Cat as Kiyoshima jumped on the Xbox, basically double peaking that angle close door. And eventually it just came down to a situation where the trades happened in a way that favored NIP. So far, NIP have had the better of Envy every time they try something, but apart from the Ecos. And now again, we see those Tech Nines stacking out from Envy. In a 13-9 situation, this is a, a bit of an investment. They've all gone for the head armor as well, but Forrest, he's going to find himself. Oh, a th triple stack. They're just cheek to cheek sat there through the mid. Forrest gets himself three. Won't get the fourth as MBK works his way around, but the damage is already done. We see NIP. They're collecting themselves. Hat trick of flags. And now Happy, just the last man standing with 12 health. Has actually self got himself around the back of them, but he doesn't have the bomb. NIP already got that one completely covered off. Yeah, Forrest really did a great job using his flashes right there. That was a strat that the French scene had in, in general has been using now since probably ESL Cologne, where they do that mid-B split, and they constantly just keep flashing spawn, keep flashing spawn, keep flashing spawn, keep flashing spawn. But Forrest is in a spot that doesn't get blind by the spawn flashes, so he's safe. And he basically throws his flash off the wall, and all those guys are basically dead set on looking straight in front of him. Forrest, veteran play right there. One of those moments you could see, actually, they were trying to clench against the wall and try and get up to the box, but instead they got caught out by the lip. Then the other person ran into each other, and you're looking at yourself on the minimap thinking, I'm not quite there. Yeah. Not quite. I'm not sure what I'm running into, but nonetheless, Forrest knew exactly what they were running into. Shocks, very aggressive, very fast, actually, straight through the mid doors here. Smoked it off, run through, but he will get caught out. Get right, spotted the change. Gets himself one. Kiyoshima, you can see the envy. They force by. They've got the Galils. They've got anything they can get their hands on here as the game is slipping away from them. 14 9 now. Double smokes go out there onto short. Alu aware that he's going to have a bit of a push on towards him from the rest of envy. Holds the position. You talked about it before. He knows that they can't invest in the mollies. He knows it is in a safe position. 
and they have to rush up on him. And he's going to be ready, but MBK with a quick pre-fire, I believe, on that box. Freiburg knows that they've got the A site taken, and Plant goes in. It's MBK rolling back the years, trying to go with that AWP. We'll see how it works out for him. Forrest gets tagged up heavily, has to back away. Freiburg was taken down long A in the meantime. Happy as well, now they're smoked off. Happy's going to try and get around the backside. And it will be the round for Envy. And that was absolutely a round they needed. They'd invested everything into that one. AKs, Galils, anything they could get their hands on. Yeah, and and that's just Shox's brilliance right there. That He died with, without a single kill. And a lot of people will think this is crazy. People were probably like, what is he doing? Why is he just running out mid through that smoke? The default setup that Nip always falls into. Forrest and Exist go into the B-bomb site. Three guys take long. The op, two Colts. One rotate spawn. Shox probably should have turned around expecting that guy to be spawn, but it was a really good play to run out mid solo like that and basically look for that kill onto Forest. And it basically allowed his team to know one spawn, two B, one cat, one long. Well, talking about CZs, Hallo, this time around on long A pushes through. MBK has gone down, and already it's a five on three situation. Can you also talk out? Get right, getting a couple of peeks on towards him. It is going to be a short, but look at Freiburg waiting in Goose. With this P250, will he get the surprise on Smiths? He comes around, you bet your life he does. That's the orb down. Shox is going to get a second peek. Freiburg just peeking around, shoulder peeking. Oh, he's got the bomb carrier down. And this has all suddenly gone very wrong for Envy. Get right, will get taken down by Keo, but now he's in a one and four. He has to pick up the ace to even try and salvage the situation for Envy here. And this has gone from bad to worse. This would be match point for Ninjas in Pajamas to make it through to the final against Fnatic and Keo. He's in between a rock and a hard place with 35 seconds ticking. He will find himself a second on Alu. And now he knows. Peeking across, but nobody, nobody is shown from him. We can see on the X-ray. There he finds one. Tries to get the second. Got himself the fourth. Very, very close. Very close. And NAP actually played that perfectly. It's just Keo is just so fast on hitting those shots, just whipping around. Whew. Close round, but... Man, these eco rounds are, are killing both teams right now. But NIP is just clearly on top. They're able to string together way more rounds right now than Envious. And look, here we are, 15-10. Envious on a force buy. Not a single rifle in their hands. Match point. And this B push has worked out for Envy a couple of times. But this time it means they may want to change it up. They've got those Tech Nines, CZs, whatever pistol your choice is, they've gone for it. Along with the head armor, and Exist has faced this a number of times already, and that grenade is going to be right on point. Lands square on the jaw of MBK. Bomb plants are down. Exist gets picked off. This is NIP it's looking to win this one and go through to the final. Smith's the last man standing in a one on three situation with the M4 in hand. Slows it down. Looks across. Alu's there. And Ninjas in pajamas are through to their fifth major running. Can they be the first to take two? Or will Fnatic get in their way? They'll be waiting for them in the finals tomorrow. And would you believe it? Incredible. How many times do NIP change things up? But they're there again. Every time. They're always in the finals. It's like it's almost like they spawn there, right in the finals of these majors. They just start in the finals, right? They're just <laughs> <laughs> It's incredible. And you look at the games they had earlier on today, TSM, it was a struggle, and honestly, a lot of us, even watching it. A, a plethora of pro players had them written off because they were almost down and out on Nuke and how many times in tournaments across the board, back at DreamHack Winter, we wrote them off almost in the group stage. I think it was against Penta in the groups and they were struggling, but it was just a couple of rounds. They got into overtime, got themselves back in there and sure as hell, they've done it again here in Katowice. It seems they are. You're just unable to keep them out of it. And you know, that's envy. That is the previous major winners now out of this tournament. Pretty much everyone approaching this one, when they saw the quarterfinal draw, had a Fnatic MV final almost written on the cards. Yeah, it's crazy. No matter what they do, no matter the, the players they get, the roles they swap, you saw Exist in the B-bomb site that last round. Literally, this is the first tournament I think I've ever seen him play that B-bomb site. He's always been the A rotator. Did an excellent job that match holding the B-bomb site against swarming Tech 9 rushes, which are no joke at all in this game, I'm sure many of you know. Um, Killing two guys using excellent nade usage over there at the B-bomb site. Alu hitting all the shots he needs to hit. May have not ended up with the most frags. All of them impact frags. The knowledge of the roles of the game. Any of them can do anything around the map. Can't wait to see them go up tomorrow. All Swedish final.
all Swedish final, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Fnatic up against Ninjas in Pajamas. Let's see what they've got to say over on the stage. Thank you so much, D-Man, and thank you, of course, Sean Number One. This crowd's been fantastic, and I'm standing next to a understandably excited and happy Get Right. How is that for you, good sir? Just happy. I guess we broke a curse as well, so that was good for us, uh, since they've been winning like 10-1 in total, or 10-2 or something, so that was good that we finally won on land as well, so it's just an amazing feeling right now. Good for you, sir. Now, five majors and five times you've been in the final. What, what does that say? We're a pretty good um, team, like pretty good. It doesn't really matter what happens and so on. We're just happy, but there's still one of the skull left and it's the win over Fnatic, but it's cool it's Swedish final again though, in a way. Um, but I think that Val need to give us something special since I mean, it's five times in the finals. We should get something special, right? I, I'm, they're here, so you know maybe they're listening. I, I have to ask. I mean, I heard you guys, you know, uh, from back backstage when that, that that victory finally came in, cheering. You know, the noise. I mean, how much was a release? How much was released there? Not everything, though, but uh, almost everything. Now, obviously, there was a question being asked to me, and I'm going to try to get this right. The T side pick in the in the first uh, map on cash. What was that about? Well, it was me who decided we should have start T since we are more comfortable on T side and. Uh, we had a pretty good understanding on, I mean, on every map against them. So I felt that if we start a T, we can keep on rolling. And if, we, if they are close to get money fact, we can just rebuy and so on. It, you pretty much decide the game there if you just keep on rolling as T. And I felt it was a good choice of us. But sometimes you get backfire, but this time it didn't. Well, I can say you played phenomenally. The crowd's been supporting you all the way. Guys, a big round of applause again for the ninjas in pajamas. Now, of course, there'll be plenty for our analysts to discuss. So for now, we're going to hand it over to our main man, Machine. Well, I think it's time we someone did a study on what they're putting in the water in Sweden because they seem to be able to play CS pretty well as we do have that all-Swedish final, as Get Right said. Fantastic performance from both teams. And uh, NIP, they've done it every single time, five majors. Uh, let's just go down the line and just talk about a little bit of a theory, maybe, on what NIP are doing so right. Casper, first of all. They just have uh, very good players for pretty much every position there is to be in, in Counter-Strike, especially at the moment and with the addition of Elu. Maybe he didn't put up 30 frags, but the AWP frags he got was extremely important. He won the AWP battles against both uh, Shocks and Smiths. Yeah, you have the Lurker and Get Right, you have the Entry Fragger and Freiburg. You pretty much have, like, Forrest coming in as the second or third guy, just cleaning up the side, and, I mean... Just like if you want to build a team, they're pretty much a very good team to build, so... You talk of how strong the team is. Let's have a look at the stats then for that game or for the games in general. And you can see just how well it's shaped up for NIP. Exist has really been making a, a, a performance throughout the event. And it's so good to see a, a player who I think it's safe to say doesn't always get the recognition he deserves really bringing it when it counts. Hiko. Yeah, absolutely. We, we were talking earlier about how Exist doesn't really get the credit he deserves. It's very hard to plan a team when you have someone like Get Right, Forrest, two of probably the best Counter-Strike players who have ever played Counter-Strike. Um, so like for him to step up and actually what I would call carry uh, to an extent what he's been doing, it's, it's very, very nice to watch. And now, of course, with, let's turn our attention to the French side, the side who, of course, going home. Commiserations to Envious uh, in that 2-0 sweep. Apex. Let's talk a little bit about Envious, and I asked you just when we were off air, was that Envious giving it their all, and or NIP, NIP too strong, and you had some things to say? Well, this time NIP were too strong. Uh, that was crazy. Their T side were too good, so I don't want, I don't know what to say, but they were really strong, these. Mm. Um, Many as T, as I said. This played ama amazingly, so as I said before, it's like the NIP uh, from 2000. 12, so. Yeah, that was the statement. I was just going to uh, ask a bit more about that. You said quite, uh, quite eloquently, you said it's like they're playing with Fifth Laren again. Could you maybe expand on that? Well, uh, Makelele was most aggressive than Fifth Laren was, or maybe um, uh, Alu was, is. So that's why they are playing more, not on, Make on their op, but on every player's, and that's why they are so good. Jordan, your thoughts? Yeah, well, obviously, on Dust 2, losing those two eco rounds are brutal. Um, and for Ziz to play well, all those things added up. 
I mean, Envious definitely had the ability to win that match, but losing those rounds and not really getting any momentum, Aldo getting the shots he needed to, Zist, like you said, isn't always expected to get a lot of frags, but when he does, it's insane. There's, their lineup on paper, obviously, has all the roles filled as textbook as you could think, and, you know, Nip just brought it home. I think the word that I always use when talking about NIP is resilient because they're able to kind of just come through in any situation. They've made five majors in a row. That alone speaks for that. So um, they just showed that again. And round after round, they were ready for what uh, Envious was doing. Uh, yeah. Kasper? We talked about in the pregame analysis, analysis thing that... Uh, <laughs> that uh, Envious would have to go aggressive on the CT side, and, and so they did. It actually paid off a lot of the rounds, having Happy in the lower tunnels, and uh, Smith and Kyushima pushing the upper tunnels, denying half of the map for NIP in this situation, and uh, you need to kind of give them credit for that, because it's the opposite of what TSM were doing, and it clearly didn't work out for TSM to just be laid back and wait for NIP to do their thing, so I kind of have to give them credit for meeting them at this point, but like Jordan is saying, those two NTE losses is just like crucial, especially at the moment where it was 14 to 10. Yeah. Said. It's time to look at the brackets, review what we've seen today. While, of course, I have everyone with us, let's put them on the screen and a little review of what we've seen so far in this tournament. What a journey it has been. Of course, Fnatic, their route to the grand final is now on your screens. You saw them besting Penta and that game against Virtus Pro 2-0. Uh, Jordan, any results that really stand out to you in this uh, bracket? Uh, not in particular, to no? be honest. I mean, KD Stars getting that map on Virtus Pro was pretty mm. awesome for them. Um, otherwise, everything here looks pretty much as I expect. Fnatic rolled through their side of the bracket pretty easy. Um, NIP did the same. TSM was a good team. I felt if TSM played a little bit stronger, that actually could have been scarier for NIP. So um, at the end there, I honestly thought they were gonna, TSM was going to win Nuke earlier. I was sitting doing a signing, and I was like, it's 12-12. TSM's on CT side, nips out of the tournament. But Nip obviously showed their resilience once again, <laughs> and they came through and won it. So this final tomorrow is going to be epic, and I'm really looking forward to this. You got one team who has so much experience and so much skill, and has played for so long in NIP, and you got Fnatic, who literally has probably the best four core in the world right now in terms of just all of them being able to make plays at any time, whether it's Olaf or Crims or this, that, the other. They're all able to turn around around. So I'm going to be most excited for this final than I have been in a long time. How about you, Hiko? Uh, I think it's worth mentioning, actually, that I don't think Fnatic has actually dropped a single map this entire tournament yet. So going into the finals with that with, uh, on you, yeah. uh, Nip has actually have obviously dropped some maps. Um, this is Fnatic's tournament. They haven't lost a map. They want to win this. Uh, also something worth mentioning is when Nip and Fnatic both have won their majors, it's been with different rosters. So both different rosters, both have something to prove. Fnatic looking so strong this tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And last time these two teams met in the in a major final, it was at DreamHack 2013, the very first major of Cisco. And at that time, Fnatic were heavy underdogs. But I think most of us, in some ways, see them as the favorites because they played li the best at this tournament. But NAP also just has this experience of being extremely good in the in the intense and uh, late matches. Fantastic stuff from everyone here at the desk. I think it might be time for us to say goodnight, though. It's been a real great day of CS, and it's been a pleasure to have all of you on the desk, and I'm sure we'll be seeing your faces sometime soon, no matter where in the CS community. From now, though, do be sure to get on social media. Let, let us know how you see that grand final playing out, or let us know, of course, how you found today, if there's any surprises that you weren't perhaps expecting. Using the hashtag, of course, ESL1. Uh, I've been Alex Machine Richardson. These guys have been my brains of CSGO. And for now, as we say in Poland, Dobranos.